Hi, we're the team Leibniz was robbed. We're here to talk about the five color theorem. Why the four color theorem? Who thought about that problem? Francis Guthrie first thought about the four color theorem in 1852. He was coloring the counties of England and he noticed that in order for the countries to not have the same color next to each other, he needed at least four colors. Why is Francis Guthrie important? First of all, Guthrie was born in 1831 and died in 1899. While he was a student at the University of College London, he studied under De Morgan. He obtained his mathematics and his law bachelor degrees in 1850 and 1852 from the University of College London as well. When Guthrie couldn't think of a proof, he would take it to De Morgan, who would then give it to other people as well. Was this proof proved soon after De Morgan asked around, or did this take a long time? No, it was proved multiple times, but they were not the correct answer. The four color theorem was the first major theorem to be proved using a computer. Who else attempted to prove this proof? In 1878, Arthur Cayley applied mathematical induction to approach the four color theorem using cubic maps. Alfred Bray Kemp also attempted the proof using his Kemp chains. But Alfred Bray Kemp's proof was proven wrong, right? Yes, Percy John Hewitt proved it wrong in 1890, but he did not prove the four color theorem. Instead, he proved that every map can be five colored. He did this in his paper called Map Coloring Theorem. He would prove that the number of edges around each region is divisible by three, and the region is then four colorable. Were there other deviations from the four color theorem? Augustine Cauchy in 1813 made a proof of the polyhedron formula. He used the formula F plus V minus E equals one, not counting the outside of the region, which deduced that there should be five or fewer countries on the map. What helped in getting the proof for the four color theorem? G.D. Birkhoff introduced the concept of reducibility which in many other math mathematicians they used to prove the four color theorem. In 1922, Franklin published examples of unavoidable sets that any map with less than or equal to 25 degrees can be four colored. The amount of regions only increased as time went on. Who solved the proof and how did they do it? In 1976, Oppel and Hawken were able to write the proof for the four color theorem. They had the unavoidable set with around 1,500 different configurations and their boundary ring size down to less than or equal to 14. There were lots of trial and error with a lucky intuition. The proof used over 1,200 hours of computer time. What exactly is the five color theorem? The five color theorem states that in any planar graph or picture is five colorable. That means that any two adjacent shapes on any picture will be two different colors if there is at least five possible colors to use. Here is an example of an abstract five color map. Notice how all four colors are touching the white circle. We are forced to introduce a fifth color in order to complete the map. How do we prove it? We can prove the five color theorem using a contradiction. Let's consider a case of degree less than or equal to 4. The shape below will be our map. We have four colors represented so far on the map, red, blue, yellow, and green. Because all these colors are connected to the center, we would need to introduce a fifth color to fill it in, similarly to the example we just showed. Since the map can be colored with five colors, this is a contradiction. What is the next step? The next step would be to consider the case with degree equal to 5. If two of the outer circles, V1 through V5, are colored with the same color, then a color is available for V1, for V, in which case we are done. But let's assume that V1 through V5 are colored with all different colors. Here's an example of a map similar to the one from degree 4, with circles stemming from V1 and V3. Notice they are all either red or yellow. We can rearrange colors so V1 and V3 are both yellow, so V can become the color red. The circles stemming from V1 will change as well. Now the graph looks like this. However, if we connect V1 and V3 circles, then we have two yellow circles connected, so we have to change the colors of V1 back. 
What we can do now is make V2 and V4 both green so we can change V to blue just as so. Now every circle stemming off of V2 and V4 is either green or blue. If we attempt to connect V2 and V4, then there are two greens connected. However, because there is overlap between V1 and V3's extensions and V2 and V4's extensions, it is no longer a planar graph. Oh. That's where the contradiction is. Correct. This contradicts our theorem, thus concluding our proof. One application of graph theory, coloring theory, is with security cameras. So if you're given a floor plan such as this, you want to be able to see the entire floor plan in 3D space using as few cameras as possible. Um, we do this because for financial reasons as well as it's easier to monitor a building using fewer cameras. So if we take a floor plan, floor plan like this and form basic polygons out of the floor plan such as this, we can see that you either need six or seven cameras to monitor the whole thing. Obviously six is more optimal. So the six would be one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Seven would require here, 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 here. And seven. As you can see, both both options, six or seven cameras, you can see all the, all the floor plan. However, with this option, you're using less cameras. Another example is a cellular network. In a cellular network, such as Verizon's, you have different um, cellular towers that cast distinct signals. Uh, they have to cast different signals because if they were to intersect, the same signal would interfere with one another. Thus, to maintain a simple network, we desire the fewest amount of cellular signals possible for monetary reasons and just keeping the network simple. Um, this is seen, obviously, as an application of graph coloring theory because the number of vertices, i.e. the number of cellular towers, has to be minimized while covering the entire cellular network. Another example is university exam scheduling. Um, with this example, we want to minimize the number of conflicts between the same group as well as other groups. By this, I mean that we don't want two exams intersecting with each other that contain the same students. Um, thus, coloring theory comes into play by minimizing these two conflicts. This is also an example that incorporates evolutionary algorithms. 